is this Project Veritas story that I've covered on my YouTube channel. Um, have not had a chance to cover on the radio yet, but Project Veritas came out this last week and has been, and it's no longer headed by James O'Keefe. A lot of people might have thought that Project Veritas was just going away after James O'Keefe left, but they're still doing some good work. And this work that they actually are doing are exposing doctors um, that are that discuss at doing transgender treatment uh, on young, young children. I have a video here. I'm not going to play the whole thing. I sent it to Molly before this so she can share her thoughts. Um, but let's take a look at this video of what Project Veritas, one of the things that Project Veritas is pushing out about this, of their undercover footage with doctors. Listen here. The youngest we've seen come here that they are trans has been eight, nine. We build the pages that come in that sense. They come here by themselves. We had a 14, 15 year old who um, is still undocumented. Um, has she been able to start like hormones? She just started, yes. Yeah, oh, started wow. as well. And we do not provide the authorities any of our records. We don't care if you see a licensed therapist or not. We don't require that at all. So we brought in our own therapist to write off the letters to rubber stamp our surgeries. As long as I know that even though he's not here legally, he's able to be seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyone who said so that's just a kind of a summary of some of the stuff. They're releasing many, many videos of multiple lengths. I mean, this one, this one alone is 13 minutes. This is part two. Apparently they have at least three parts I know of. Um, and these are doctors that are saying it does not matter if you're documented or not. It doesn't matter if you've had a therapist, uh, give you an okay or not anything. And, and I even have an issue, even if they have a therapist given okay, but, but nevertheless, there is nothing really required. And they're allowing these treatments to be done on eight, nine, 10, 14, 15, under 18 period is a problem in which it's hormone therapies, potential surgeries, and these doctors are permitting it. Molly, I sent this to you before and to make sure you could watch the whole thing if you wanted to um, give you an idea of, of this. What are your thoughts as a parent? I mean, yikes. Yeah. So I, I come at it from a couple different angles. So I am a nurse. I've been a nurse for 17 years. And so the first the first comment before my like even parent thoughts got going was the rubber stamp comment, <clears throat> because that right there to me is is kind of the crux of this whole thing is like we'll bring in people who are going to just say yes to what we want. Right. And so in any other um, medical you know, decision and medical journey, typically like second opinions are usually sought for a reason mm -hmm. and whatever that is, maybe it's a cancer treatment. Maybe it's some sort of surgery that's newer. Um, if you are outright saying we don't need any other opinions, we don't need to involve the authorities. We're just rubber stamping it. I think that should spook everybody right there. That's like ethical, like red flag. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So then my mom thoughts are like, oh, my gosh, my son, we're having an eighth birthday party in a couple of weeks and like we're out catching Pokemon, you know, like we're mm -hmm. like <laughs> we're, we're like doing normal eight year old boy stuff. Right. And so I'm just thinking to myself there. There is just no way, guys, there's just no way that these little children, these these innocent little children should even be discussing that. Like, I don't even know that my son has any kind of understanding of any of this, let alone making those types of decisions. And it just really, it makes my stomach like sick to, to think about. Absolutely. Well, and the things that I think about as I see this is <clears throat> it's uh, hashtag too young. I think that's incredibly important to talk about because while I think that there's issues personally, with the whole transgender ideology and the fact that if you walk into a doctor's office, you shouldn't be allowed to just go in and say, I feel like I should be an amputee. Please cut off my arm. I think that's a problem. But just... Kevin, like, I don't mean to interrupt, but mm -hmm. like, that's a really good example on two, two points. Mm -hmm. One, the adult versus minor child, right? That's, that's where I really wanted to get into Right, is like, I think there's an argument to be made about, okay, an elective surgery after 18 yeah. over the age of consent. There's an argument meant to be made there. I still don't fall on that side of it, sure. uh, but there's an argument to be made. I think that there is not no good argument no. for doing this for children, young yeah. children. Yeah, I think. And that's where instead of having like a coherent discussion, what I've learned, unfortunately, throughout the campaign trail was like, unless you blindly and enthusiastically just cave to whatever that is that they're saying, then you're, you know, anti this and anti this and all these other things when really 
if I'm being honest, as an adult, I don't need to know or care like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like have said, like I, I don't know that I'd agree with it, but like you're an adult, right? These are minor children. These are Eight, nine, minor ten, children. Yeah. Like, why is this? How are we even having to have a conversation that mm -hmm. it like has to defend that? Like, yeah. is mind blowing. So for me, yeah, that's that's like I. My, and this goes back to how I raised my own kids. We're not here to be mean to anyone. We're not going to make fun of anyone. We are respectful human beings. And, um, but what gets lost in translation is that that doesn't mean that you have to, you know, agree with, or that you have to blindly follow. Right. Mm -hmm. And so being able to say, no, I don't think that's okay. Absolutely. Well, and, and again, getting back to the point is that these are young, young children, 10, 11, 12, 8, 9, in some cases, even they said 14, 15. Even if you want to make the argument, oh, well, a 14, 15 year old, they're in high school, they might have a better understanding. There's a reason. And I said this on my YouTube channel in a different video, but for the first time on the radio, there's a reason why a 14 year old can't drive a car. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why a 14 year old can't vote. There's a reason why you have to be 18, if not 21, to buy certain types of guns in general, but certain handguns not until you're 21 in Illinois, at least. There's a reason why we limit what 14, 15, 8, 9, 10-year-olds can do. Mm -hmm. And it's because your mind is not fully developed. Hey, my mind isn't even fully developed yet. I'm not 25 yet. And that's what I the science say, says is that 25 is typically when your mind is fully developed. And like I said, so there's an argument to be had as to what you can do when your mind's fully developed, when you're over the age of consent. There's an argument to be made for that. There is no, there should be no tolerance for young, young children being given this. And so why is this happening? And I have my theories, but I'm curious, Molly, why is it that we have a medical medical community that is perpetuating the ability for children to be able to maybe not necessarily have these full surgeries, but at least have these hormone therapies that mess with their bodies? Well, yeah. Okay. So see, even before we jump into that, mm -hmm. um, I will condense this to be super quick. My youngest, I'm a mom of three, mm -hmm. and my toddler just recently had to be seen at the children's hospital. She had a lump in her breast. Mm. And long story short, it's okay. It's not, it's benign. But one of the surgeons that I talked to throughout this process, he told me hands down, unless I had definitive proof that this was like a malignant something or other, I wouldn't remove it. I wouldn't do anything with it because it would impact her ability later on to develop breasts. And I mm. thought, what, like, that's, that is something that you don't realize you are, these types of things are permanent, Kevin, mm -hmm. these things, these, and I, it just kind of clicked in my personal experience with the baby of I'm worried about, does this need removed? Is there something wrong with her? And he's like, you know, we'd have to really know that that's the case because this would, this would essentially ruin her breast development later in life. And we mm -hmm. don't want to do that. Right. And so you have a moment where you're like, oh my gosh, these things, these are permanent things that, that we're doing to these kids. Mm -hmm. Do I, I struggled to think of what that reason is, Kevin. Um, the reason why I think, I don't know the reason why it's being pushed. Mm -hmm. The reason why people kind of don't argue about it is exactly what I experienced in the campaign trail. Because if you have any, so much as a question, you're just, I mean, called every name in the book, you're all these things. And it's, it's like a, a mechanism in which to just bully people and shut people down from independent thought. Absolutely.